Alright everybody, welcome back to my channel for another video. Uh, this one is not going to be as long as the first one that I did. Uh, this video is going to be going into um, drawing faces, uh, viewing in different angles. Um, the first video I did was uh, about drawing the face, looking at it from the front, from the front view. Uh, this one's going to be more into like drawing a face uh, from a three-fourths view or a profile view and uh, a couple angles in between those two. So uh, that's what we're going to be going into. As, as always, I'm using uh, Clip Studio Paint EX as the software. And the hardware I'm using is a Microsoft Sur Surface Pro 4 with the Microsoft Surface Pen. All right, we're just gonna jump right in. So, as usual, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start off by opening a new canvas, illustration, and uh, press OK to open this canvas up. And uh, here we are with our first layer. Before I even get started, I'm gonna go down here and change the layer name to Rough. Matter of fact, we're going to change it to rough, or actually not rough, draft, just draft. Change it to draft and we're going to set it as, we're going to set it as a, uh, as a draft layer. If you can't see that pencil right there that you would use to set that, it means that your screen is pushed over a little too much. So just move it over a little bit, adjust it a little bit like that, and then it should show up right there. And this little pencil indicator right here lets you know that it's a draft layer. So now that we've got that set up, I already got my pencil, uh, my pencil selected, and we're gonna get to it. So with this, well, let's start off with doing a uh, profile view or side view. The first thing you want to do, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. First thing I like to do, like I said in my last video, these are just my methods of doing the thing. Doing this this is not the only method nor is it the best method it's just uh, methods that I use that I know work well and they work well for me so that's that's what I'm going to utilize so first thing I like to do is start off with a circle and you could be as rough as you want with this it does not need to be a perfect circle but you're trying to aim for it to be as much like a, a circle as possible you don't want it to look like a box I'm pretty I mean you could you could definitely take advantage of it being a box and I'll, I'll get to something like that a little later in the video but you know for right now just roughly a, a circle just like that it's okay to pet the lines like I'm doing like this it, it's gonna be really rough it doesn't need to be perfect or pretty it just needs to be circular shaped okay once you got that into place the next thing you want to do is you want somewhere near the middle of the circle like right around here depending on how your circle is shaped you want to draw a line kind of almost to the center like like that okay now that you got that line in there at the end of that line you want to draw like a a rough shape of what an ear of, of like an ear basically that's what you're doing is drawing like a rough ear shape just like that once again this is you know just a rough draft this does not need to be perfect or look super pretty or anything and then we're gonna go back to the outside of the circle right here and we're gonna draw a line down to like roughly a little bit past where the circle bottoms out so here's that line and here's where the circle ends and then you're gonna I like to move the screen a little bit and then draw a line from here like that just like that so now that we got that in there, right? The next thing we want to do is, because we got all that stuff in there, is we're going to start to try and rough out the face. So how do we do that? So where this line is right here, we're going to slightly go like this, curve it a little bit. See where I did that right there? Curve it a little bit like that, straight down. And then just past the outside of the circle right here is where you're going to do that little swoop like that. And then from there, you just straight down like that. And there you go. That's a bot. That's basically like the front half and chin area right there and the nose all in that single line right there. And then from here, you just straight like this. And there's your chin. See? And then from here, 
like right around here you want to draw a line so like kind of think of it like there's a straight line like that and this is where your neck can go and if your character is like in a different position or something like that you can draw it differently but from right here you know it's pretty easy from the ear you want to go to like right here and this will be where the back part of your neck is right, right there right boom there you go okay so you got all that in there right now you need to figure out where to put your eyes so this line right here remember in the first video for all of you that seen it um this line right here you see how i had the ear come from the top of the line to the right where the nose is just like that same thing here so right around where this line is is where your eyes are going to go it's really easy so all you got to do is so right about here right start to put your eye in there i like to do it like that right and then there's where the actual iris is gonna go like so and then from the back here you just can put like a line like this that represents the bottom of the eye right there like that so there you go now you got an eye in there right so now at this point you need to put the rest of that in the rest of the things in there like the eyelid and the eyebrow so how do you do that right above the eye here draw a line like this and then put another line above it like that and follow it down like that so that right there is the eyelid right there and then right above that you just put eyebrow you don't need it to be that that long I mean unless you want it that long it's sure go for it but you know for this for this tutorial I'm not gonna make it that long and uh, there you go when it comes to drawing the pupil you don't want it to be you don't want it to be like this you you don't want it to be just flat like that because it looks really weird right people's eyes in real life aren't really shaped like that when you look at somebody's uh, like a diagram of how the eyes are in the, in the skull and everything they're not just a straight line like that they're actually kind of rounded like that so that's what you want you want like a kind of rounded thing and then when you do it like that it's showing on the back side when you put it rounded like that too it's showing that it's it's moving across a sphere if you will so like it's moving across it like an actual spear and i'm putting this right here because it's, it's representing the other end of the eyelash and then in the front here you can put like some rough eyelashes like that and like that but yeah it's it's kind of letting you know that it's moving across like a mass or a spear a shape like that and then from here from right here we're going to draw the rest of the head so you got the eyebrow right here so here's what the forehead is and then, like I said before in my other video, right? When you get to like the top of the head here, like I said, there's a part of the head where it's like kind of flat. It's not really flat, all like just completely and utterly flat, but it's like a part of the head on the top of somebody's head where it has like, a, it looks like it's flat. So you come back here where it's like the hook of the skull right here, like that. And then it comes back down like this. And you want to try to get that natural look in there, right? And, and there you go. You got your basic head shape in there like that. See? So now you got your eye placement. You got your ears. You got your eye, eyebrows, your eyelash, your eyelid, and like your face shape. It's, it's all in there. Boom. See? Real easy. Real simple stuff. So like, let's put a little bit of detail in the ear right here, right? So for that, all you gotta do is start right here, put the triangle in like that. I like to, I always do it like this, it's easy to remember. Cause sometimes you look at certain things and be a little complicated sometimes. So. so like that, straight up right here. Come from the other side like this and then curve right here. Come right back out where you just did that at come out here come up here come like this boom you got yourself a ear there you go super easy man and uh depending on the character if you let's say you want to emphasize the jaw like a little more you could just do something like this you know what i mean you could do something like that to show 
the the surface area behind the ear and where there's actually like a jaw a heavy jaw area like there or jaw line you can do that so you're saying you're probably at this point going okay well where does the mouth go at this point like this looks weird it doesn't have like a mouth or anything on it okay let me show you how to do that really quick so in this area right here is obviously where your mouth is going to go because your nose is right there right I'm just erasing this so you can get a better visualization of how this is going to go so you don't want it to be directly in between where the nose and the chin is you want to have like a specific you want to be very specific okay maybe not very specific but you want to be you want it to look a certain way so you want to pay very close attention to how you where you place it but it also has a lot to do with how you want the character to look remember at the end of the day this is your drawing so you're the one who decides really exactly how you want it to look oh, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the person have their mouth kind of like open like they're speaking so how do you do that and make it look really cool so pretend right here right underneath where the nose is right what you want to do is pretend okay the lips the top lip is right here right the bottom lip is right here because the mouth is open right so what you want to do is you have to think about it like the lip is actually doing this because that's what you're thinking about and the lip is doing this on the top you know and they connect in the back right here that's what you want to think look you want to have that visualization in your mind it'll make it so much easier to draw because then what you do is on the inside here then you just basically draw the mouth like this right one here you want to go like that and then a little down and then like this right and then you could just put a line right here but you got these right here to really emphasize that the mouth is open see that so then another thing you do is for something like this you put this shape in here like this and that basically shows oh teeth right and then you put this shape in here like this and that shows the character's tongue so there you go and then in the back right here you put lines to emphasize shadow right and there you go you got lips you got your bottom chin right here you got some lips right here the other side of the mouth right here lips nose just like that see now the character has like a has a look as if they're they're basically they look like they're saying something right or they're like saying hi or bye or whatever but you you have that look there i, I kind of didn't like the way it looks so i'm like let me redo this a little bit that's the best part about sketching though is you could if you don't like how something looks you could just redraw it as many times as you want because it, it's okay that it looks ugly or messy right all right so another thing is let's say you want to draw the muscul musculature in the neck again like last time so same thing you pretend there's a line from here to here like there's a v right just like that and that line is right there so that means that the collarbone is right here right now this, this time you still do you still put that line right here but you and the, but this time when you draw the traps you want to go like this it's still the triangle it's just in a different it's a different angle but it's still a triangle so your traps are still if the traps are still right there it's just in a different kind of different position see but they're still there like that and then to, to show like the other side try draw a quick easy triangle like this and then basically this is the clavicle for the other side or collarbone for the other side see so it kind of shows like the other side of the neck it shows all the muscles are there basically and then whatever you feel like you don't need like if you feel like something is too excessive just erase it see i didn't like how it was it was too much too much musculature going on in one spot but i got the basic 
I got the basic down. See, I got everything in the picture that I wanted to be in the picture for this profile view. Let's say I put maybe a little bit, see? just a little bit, not a whole lot. And there you go. And that's kind of how I go about doing like a profile view. Mm, I don't like the way the nose is just a little too, too short. So let's make it a little longer, right? So real easy. Well, see? Just like that. This is, and that's, that's all it takes, right? So that's how I go about doing like a profile view face. Um, let's do, let's do a three fourths, right? I know a lot of people struggle doing a three fourths view face. That one's not particularly an easy one for, for people that's just starting out or even people that have been drawing for like a while, they might still have like problems drawing that because it's, it's hard to envision that face in a three, in that view, in a three-fourths view like that, it can be rather difficult. So, how do I go about doing it? Well, when I first started out, the way I would go about doing it is this. Um, what you want to do is the same technique I showed in the first video. You want to start off with an oval shape, like so, right? Just like that, a quick oval shape, right? Now, instead of drawing a cross in there like you did in the first video, just straight like that, no, that's not what you want to do. If you want to do it this way, you gotta, you're gonna draw it slightly off to the side. Wherever the person is trying to, is, is looking at, that's where you want to start that cross area. But this time around, we're not gonna draw a dot where the nose is because this one's a little different. So from here, then once you got that in there, you want to draw that line across like this and remember you want to try and get it to where it's kind of wrapping around a circle like that right now that's a little like crooked so let me redo that let me do it this way like that that's better okay so now before we draw I draw like the placement for the eyes or anything else what you do is you go from the top here you follow the head around and then you draw another line down the side of the this uh, oval shape like that see like that near the back here you see that so then you go to this side over here now from the from below this line right here you want to do this you want to think of like a you want to start this is basically what's going to be the characters like cheek and then you slowly bring it down like that to this line and you want to practice like kind of drawing it like that so if that's the character's cheek right this down here is the chin you just want to draw it like that and then you bring it up like this just like that so just by doing that right there and then I can bring like another line right here. Just by doing that, I've, I've got the bottom of my character's face right there. So then on this line right here where this intersection is, I can go like this. And now I got an ear, see? So I got an ear, I got this jaw, this, this piece right here representing kind of like the jaw area, the jaw line right there, the chin, cheek and the outer part of the face right there now once i've done that since i've done that and eh, eh, i don't know how i feel about this jaw area right here so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna erase it just like that get another one or get my pencil back out there and do it until i like how it looks like so and i like that a little better I noticed this is probably what's caused me to kind of look at it like, man, it looked kind of weird. So redo it till it looks the way you want it to look. See, boom, there it is. And then from here, what you can do is, now I put my circles in there for my eyes. And then remember a circle in the middle, 
and then a circle on the other side of that one in the middle. Now I have my placement for where I want my eyes to be at. So after that, once I know where that's all that stuff is going, all right, let's figure out where the nose is gonna go. Here's a trick for this. So we did the face, right? We know where the eyes is going. Let's kind of do a little bit more of the face. So we'll bring it up like that. So this, this is like an M almost. And then this is where your forehead would go, right? You got the top of the head and then that flat area I was kind of telling you about, right? And then it curves around where the hook of the skull is in the back and then it meets right here, right? So that's how you got that. That's, that's the whole head shape itself, right? So how do you get a good like nose in there, right? So this right here is where the eyebrow would go. So if that's where the eyebrow goes, you use that to get the bridge. See where the bridge in the nose is like that? Which will lead you right into the nose. Another thing you can do if you want to, you want to do something even different, just start drawing the eye like I did before, right? So this is a good way to draw the eyes. Think of the letter, the number six. I don't know why I said letter. Think of the number six. So think of like a, a weird six. See, think of like a weird six. See that? Do you see where I'm going with that? If you think of like a weird kind of like a weird number six, you just put that right there. There you go. There's one eye right there. And from that eye, you can go like this. See? And the bridge is right there. You see that? Now I just drew the nose and the eye real quick. And the same thing on the other side. Think of the number of the number six like that see and just like that i drew the other eye on the other side over there now if you notice the one eye on the outside is a little bigger than the eye on the inside so what you can do is you can always change the size and even when the eyes are exactly the same size it's always going to have that illusion depending on the way you view it Yeah, that looks a little more looks a little better and now we also know where the eyebrows go too so there's one here and there's one there like so there you go and then after you get those in there too you can kind of back off and look at it and see the overall picture like something's a little off to me so with the face and I can get a better view of it, a better visualization of it because I put in the rest of the facial parts. So let's, let's do this, right? And I like that. I like that a lot better than how I had it before. See, I like that a whole lot better. Okay. So then after that, just write a way you do this, a way you find the mouth is you pretend like this is a lip right here. See how I did that? Like that. Some people might even want to keep that in there. And you can, you know, it's your piece of art. I'm going to erase it to but That's just to help me find where I want to place the mouth. This right here. And there you go. You see? Super, super easy. Just like that. Just like that. There you go. Okay, how do you how do you go about putting the neck in there, right? Really, you can do something as simple as just putting it in there, which I'm about to do that, but remember it, it also has a lot to do with the position that your character is in it has a lot to do with the t that type of position but it could be as simple as just a line right underneath the jaw here like so and a line right back here right behind the ear right here See? 
it could be as simple as that but like i said it has a lot to do with the character's position or what type of pose you basically have the character in and then from here you just put you just put your uh hairline in there i think i forgot to do that with the other one like that so there's that and then like last time lower the opacity to like 50 and then you want to change the color of the layer add a new layer All right add a new layer and we're going to draw some hair this time around so let's draw some side view side view here this side view here is super easy all you got to do is using that hairline it's the same thing as before you want to think like an M and you're just putting the basic shape in you're not really worried about you're not really worried about um, details or nothing like that it's just the basic shape see you're not worried about detail the outside here follow that follow the head around you don't always have to put that line in there like I showed you last time but if it helps you then do that this is behind the ear right here. She's got the basic shape in there, see? Boom. Doesn't matter how messy it is, it's okay to be messy. And then put that right there. Boom. Same thing with this stuff right here. Let's draw a different type of hair this time. This time let's do like a... Let's do something like this. All right. This is why it's kind of important to have like a, to have the to have the hairline in there because you need that in order. You, it's going to really help you if you're trying to do something like what I'm doing right here. All right. Now the back of the neck right here. You want to show that there's hair kind of coming off of that like this and then now that X if I, I think I told you in one of the other videos if you're gonna put the X for the crown and this it will be like back here for the side of the head it would be right here now in real life people's crowns they could be back they're usually back in that kind of area but sometimes they could be up a little closer it's kind of weird it differs from person to person so but let's continue on with this one right here so because we know where the crown is and just put in basic shape I, I know well let me do this another thing you want to try to do when you're doing hair is you don't want there to be too much too many consistencies you want it to be kind of inconsistent Do not want it to be too consistent you want it to be inconsistent so that it looks more natural like that. see and then here just a little bit more and uh oh yeah right here go ahead and probably do that that's just to make it easier for when i go back over it again so i don't like the way that looks right there erase it do it over Down. Let's add some more volume to the back right here. There it is. So that's the two styles right there. We're going to go ahead, press this, and change the color of this layer to this right here. This purple color. All right. And lower that opacity to 50 as well. And then make a new layer above that. Now we're ready to literally go over it and add the detail in. Let's add detail into the hair before we get to anything else, right? So you can see. So easily done. All you gotta do is take your pencil and just think about adding inconsistencies to where like there's a lot of variation in the strands of hair. See? And don't be afraid to make a mistake. It's no big deal. You're still sketching. 
even if you weren't sketching anymore let's say you're like doing inks or something like that since we're drawing on a computer it's really okay to make mistakes but let's say you're doing this on paper you can still make a mistake it's no big deal you can always fix it you know what i'm saying it's not the end of the world just because you make a mistake and I know for some people that's like, man, no, that's not the case. It is the case, man. It's just a drawing. You know what I mean? You could, and if you've got the skill, you've been practicing and everything like that, you could always draw it over again. You have the skill. You put the time in to, to build your skills and everything up. You know, it's not a big deal. You could draw it again. <laughs> hey, if you draw it again, it might even be better than the first time you did it. Which I don't know for some reason. It tends to be like that to me, uh, for me sometimes. I don't, I don't really understand why, but it is. And it really, I think it's because I've drawn it once already, and my my muscle memory and stuff has kind of gotten used to doing this or doing that. So it's like more comfortable with doing that. So you see how I just put strands and everything, and I'm following the same principle I did in the first video that I did. It's the same thing. See. Follow it around, boom, there it is. Bring it down, strand here, here, like that, and there. It's the same technique, it's just, you see there's like not a whole bunch of the same thing. There's strands, but it's not the same thing over and over. It is the same thing, but it's not the same thing. Like, there's differences there, you see? And now we can go ahead and like put Put the face detail in. I'm going to start right here. Here's the nose. There's the bridge of the nose right there. This line right here. Like that. Right? Here's the chin. Follow the chin. Here's the neck. Follow the neck down. Like that. Right? Let's put the mouth. Here. This line right here, go down like that. Put the teeth like so, right? And then this right here. One thing I wanna mention is when you're drawing, it's okay to look at other artists work as like inspiration or you know reference to trying because let's say you want your artwork to look a certain way it's okay to want your artwork to look a certain way but you want to always strive to build your own style your own way you know you don't want to be like a carbon copy of your favorite artist you want to be your own artist you know you want to have your own thing and that's what you really should want to strive for as an artist it's okay to admire that person's work, but you want to, at the end of the day, be your own artist and have your own way, you know, your own art style. Something that sets you apart from everybody else. Something that's unique to you. Um, you know, I think I said it in my first video, I'm a big fan of uh, Yusuke Murata. He's not my the only artist that I enjoy looking at, but he's one of my favorite artists. And um, his art really inspires me and motivates me to try harder at perfecting my skill. But I don't want to be a carbon copy of him, you know. I don't want to just be a pretend Yusuke Murata. I want to be myself, you know. I want to be myself. So, yeah. And then another thing is it's, it's okay to copy that artist's work. To build up your ability as an artist. Because that's the best way to learn... That's, way, that's one of the best ways to learn certain techniques, you know? That's one of the best ways to learn. And as you can see here, all I'm doing is just going over that blueprint with my pencil. You know, that's all I'm really doing is going over the blueprint I laid down with my pencil. But as I was saying, like, there's nothing wrong with copying your favorite artist in order to build up that skill. And, and you learn a lot of really good techniques doing it that way. Heck, heck uh... A lot of those artists, you know, I would read some of their interviews and stuff like that. Case in point, Yusuke Murata, you know, I, I would read his interviews and he's a big fan of Dragon Ball Z. 
so Akira Toriyama and he liked he likes Mega Man in fact he even drew um he even drew some of uh, there was a contest that they had when he was a young person where the person basically needed to design uh, an enemy an enemy robot for the contest and uh he would he was drawing stuff like that which is you can see it kind of if you look in his art nowadays you can see it's some of the enemies that are on uh one punch man the way his art style is you can kind of tell you know and there's been a few times where you'll look and see he put like stuff on twitter where he would like he redrew i think he drew a picture of like quick man for mega man but in his style and you can easily tell like he doesn't draw exactly like kichi inafune kichi inafune is you know the guy behind mega man he doesn't draw like kichi inafune or nothing like that he draws his own way but but Akira Toriyama, Akira Toriyama, I'm sorry, Akira Toriyama highly influences art at a young age. And uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, learning from those artists by copying them. But you don't want to be a carbon cutout of them. You just want to learn from them. Um, yeah, we're going to do the same thing with this one right here. It's really easy. So, you know, all I'm doing is just going over those lines just like that it's really really simple it really is this this easy I think maybe in my next video um i might go into like actually uh, like inking a character or how i go about inking a character give some of my tips and techniques on how i go about doing that because i notice like when it comes to drawing and stuff like that a lot of people have anxiety about making mistakes you know, I said this a lot in my last video, and I'll say it again, man. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. It is what it is. It's okay to make mistakes. You know, as people, we make mistakes all the time. Honestly, that's the best way to learn is by making a mistake. It's, it's not really the mistake that's important. It's, it's the lesson you draw from that mistake. If you don't learn anything from when you made the mistake, though, then, you know, that's the real shame, honestly. I think like a lot of the best techniques I learned when it came to drawing was from making a bunch of mistakes. <laughs> and I made a lot, I've made like tons and tons and tons of mistakes drawing. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake. Like I said plenty of times, by no means is this the best way to do this. This is just, like I said, this is my way. This is what's always worked really well for me. So I figured, hey, share it. Share it with other people and, and see if it might, you know, help somebody else. You know, maybe they'll have a light bulb moment or something like that. Like, wow, I don't know why I didn't think of that before. I've had quite a few of those. I, I had moments like that from when I was watching those live streams of the artist that I like watching, watching his, you know, those live stream recordings and stuff like that of him drawing, doing the penciling for that book, which now sits on shelves in bookstores like Barnes and Noble. But a lot of people don't realize how many times that guy has penciled the same thing over and over again because it didn't look the way he wanted it to look. So he penciled it again and then erased it and then penciled it again and then erased it and then penciled it again and then erased it, you know, and then he'll put it to the side and do something else and then come back to it and pencil it again and then again and again until he got it exactly the way that he envisioned it to look. Now, one thing I need to mention, though, is uh, Yusuke Murata didn't originally create, you know, 
One Punch Man. It's not his original creation. Um, it was by a, a manga artist simply known as One. <laughs> That's literally uh, the name is, is One. But um, Yusuke Murata has been drawing like the redraw of the artwork. The story is still the same. It's just the artwork. Because if you've ever seen the original One Punch Man, uh, it's it's really not about the art. Not to say that the art is terrible. You know, a lot of artists are saying, oh man, this art is terrible. It's, it's not about the art. It's about the story that the artist, you know, the author is just trying to convey, basically. Almost got this one. And there it is. Put a couple strokes here, like that. There's that. And just go ahead and put the ear in place. Same technique as before. Put that right here. Boom. Like that. Boom. Come here. Put that right there. Come that down. Boom. There's the ear. Put that area right here for where the inside of the actual ear canal is. And there you go. And then we just put this line right here for the neck. This is kind of like the shoulder right here. It's a little sharp. That's better. Put the back of the neck right there. And then let's say we want to add like some shadow, right? So let's go like this. Or actually, let's do it like this. Instead of putting that in there. Let's go like that. And then those, that cross-hedging cross technique that I was talking about. See? Like that. Yeah, man. Put some some of these in here, like so. See, cool thing about hair too is um, when you draw hair, you could do a lot of stuff. Like you, you, a lot of it is is imagination too. Like if you're trying to, to be more like. I don't want to say serious, but more, uh, not necessarily realistic, but more, uh, more, on, more on the side of serious, I guess you want to say, then, um, uh, then you can kind of make it look like something you see all the time. But if you're not just, you're not trying to really be too serious about it, it it's a lot, you can have a lot more fun with hair because you can just do all kind of crazy stuff with hair and uh, the, the, with this type of art style with this type of art style it won't be so bad so all right i just did that so let me turn these off and uh, there you go there you go there you go so you got a side view right there and you got a three-fourths view right there see and it's really easy. It's not hard at all. It just takes a little practice, a little time. Um, and there it is. Real simple stuff, right? So once again, thanks for watching my video. I really do hope you learned something from this. Got any questions or anything like that, please feel free to, to uh, leave a comment, uh, like, and subscribe. And uh, I'll have more videos coming soon. Yeah. So... Until then, see you guys around.